Hello everybody and welcome back to Quinn's Coins, your home for treasure hunting of all kinds. So as many of you know, we just recently finished up our first season of CoinQuest Nickels, which was a series where we went through $100 boxes of nickels in search of interesting and valuable coins that we could use to fill in these collection books. The goal of the series, of course, was to see how far we could fill out these collection books using only coins that we found in circulation. So today we're going to be doing a deep dive into exactly what we were able to find in those $800 worth of nickels. We made a ton of progress and I have a whole bunch of cool coins to show off in today's video, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So to kick things off, I want to go back to the final episode of CoinQuest Nickels where we found two 1938 nickels. I have those right here, and I wanted to take a closer look at these because it wasn't super clear what we had at the end of that episode. So I'll start off with this one right here. It's a 1938 plane. I actually believed for a second that this could be a proof coin but it turns out that it's actually just been cleaned uh, with some sort of acid, some sort of chemical compound, uh, which actually does take value off of the coin. Now you can see that it is quite shiny. It does ha kind of have that proof-like look, but unfortunately this is just a cleaned coin, so it's not gonna be the very well sought after uh, 1938 plain proof nickel. Okay, so now coming over to this one. So the reason why this one's special, first of all, it's a 1938. These don't come up very often. Uh, second of all, it has a mint mark. The problem with the mint mark is that we weren't able to figure out exactly what it was. Um, we There's a little bit of confusion here. It may be a Denver or it may be a San Francisco, but it turns out that I have this little magnifying glass right here. And uh, if we use this on the camera, I actually found that we're able to see the mint mark uh, show up pretty well if I get it in just the right position. All right, so I went ahead off camera and repositioned the magnifier so you guys can see this for uh, maximum effect here. You can see pretty clearly that we have a San Francisco on this coin, which is a good thing and a bad thing. The reason it's a good thing is because it's actually rarer than the 1938 Denver, and I believe it's the third rarest in the Jefferson Nickel series, which is just insane to find. Unfortunately, it's a bad thing because we already have the 1938S in the collection, and uh, we were hoping for that 1938 Denver. But uh, there's always next time, of course, there will be a season two, and hopefully we'll be able to get that coin in that season. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this coin right here, and uh, hopefully you guys are as well. All right, so now it's time to get into the collections and see how far we were able to get into these collections with just $800 worth of nickels. So starting up here with our Jefferson Nickels 1938 up through 2005 collection. This actually goes through 2019 because I've made a few modifications. Let's just go ahead and open it up to the first page and see how we were able to do. So this is definitely the hardest stuff to find. Um, these are the oldest coins that you can find. As uh, I mentioned earlier, we don't have the 1938B, but we do have a 38S, which I'm super stoked about. Uh, moving down here, some of the harder dates, 39D, 39S. 1940D didn't show up for us for some reason, even though uh, it doesn't actually show up in either of the key date or low mintage ranges, but hopefully we'll get that uh, next season. Coming down here into the war nickel range, so from 1942 through 1945, uh, nickels were made out of a different metal composition, which actually contains 35% silver. If we flip over to this back side here, you can actually uh, identify the war nickels because they have a large mint mark uh, above the Monticello there. So you can see these large mint marks, whereas this coin here and this one don't uh, have those large mint marks. We're actually missing quite a few of those, especially the 44s and 45s. Um, so we're definitely gonna need some work in that area. And then we are also missing that 46S. Now luckily guys, going forward here, you're gonna see on this very next page, we actually have quite a few of these filled in. Only four missing on this page right here. And those are gonna be the 49S, which of course comes in as a key date. The 1950, which I believe is also a key date. Yep, 1950 right there. And then the 50 Denver, everybody knows, is the key date of the series coming in at less than 3 million minted. So that one is also in that key date range. And that's kind of why uh, I figure we weren't able to find it because it's just a very difficult coin to find. And then the other one that we missed on this page was the 1954 San Francisco. Uh, I don't think that one actually comes in as either a low mintage or a key date. So I'm kind of, uh, kind of baffled on how we missed that one as well, but uh, I guess you're not gonna get every single coin. All right, so moving on to the next page here, you can see it's completely full. Uh, these are pretty modern coins right here. You're never really gonna have a very uh, difficult time finding any of these, so no surprise there. So that page is full. This page is full as well, and then 
So that's 83 up through 2000. Now the next page you can see is fill it out as well. And there's actually a couple of interesting coins here. The 2009 Philadelphia and 2009 Denver are both very difficult to find. I was very happy to get both of those. And I'm pretty sure I only got like one extra uh, out of those. And then coming over here to the back page, this is what I meant when I said I made some modifications. Uh, I actually added this page myself, had to purchase it separately. Um, so this just goes up from 2016 up through 2018 and I wasn't able to find any of the 2019s because I did most of my hunting in 2018 and early 2019. So that is what the collection looks like after looking through $800 in nickels. I want to point out real quick the key dates that we did actually find. We have a 1938S, of course we did talk about that, we actually got two of them. And then we also got the 1951S and amazingly the 1955 plane, which just doesn't come up ever. It's literally the first one that I ever found. So uh, definitely happy to have those. And uh, I believe the rarest coin that we were able to pull out was that 1938S. These only come in at like 4 million minted. So definitely not one that's uh, easy to find. And uh, I'm very happy to be able to get both this one and this one right here, which I'm gonna put in the two by two flip. So here's a look at the stats on the Jefferson Nickel Collection, guys. 90.6% complete. That is just insane. I'm so happy that we are able to get that, guys. I know that that last 10% is going to be the most difficult, though. So hopefully we're going to be getting after that in Season 2. Now moving on to our Canadian Nickel Collection, guys. I gotta say, this one really shocked me because whereas we are able to find all kinds of Canadian pennies when we search pennies, the Canadian nickels really didn't come up very often. I think I averaged something like four to five Canadian nickels per box, which is just super low compared to, I don't know, maybe 50 that you find in a box of pennies. So let's go ahead and open this one up and see how we were able to do. This is the 1965 through 2012 collection. So on this first page right here, this is an interesting page because all of the coins on this page are actually made of 99.9% .9 nickel, which is uh, definitely an interesting composition for a coin. Uh, typically nickels in the United States are made out of, I believe, 75% copper and only 25% nickel. So we were only able to get two of these, the 1975 and 1979. And as you can see, those have pretty high mintages, but that's only two out of 20. That's 10% on the first page. Let's take a look at the second page here. This one came out quite a bit better. As you can see, we have all kinds of coins on this page, only missing about six of them there. And, uh, and then if we flip over to this last page, it actually gets worse towards the end here. You can see uh, this goes from 2000 to 2012, and we we're only able to get four of those coins. And now if you take a look at the stats here that I have on the Canadian Nichols collection, we got exactly one third of the collection done. So obviously quite a bit more to go hoping to bring that up to maybe 50% by the end of season two. Now moving on to the most challenging collection that we decided to tackle in CoinQuest Nickels, the Buffalo Nickel Collection ranging from 1913 up through 1938. So if we bring this placement over here and take a look here, we actually have a range for low mintage Buffalo Nickels. And you can see that there's all kinds of them on here below 10 million minted. Unfortunately, these are the most difficult coins that you could possibly look for that are actually attainable. Of course, you could look for V-nickels or shield nickels, but you really don't have a chance at finding those. You actually do have a chance at finding buffalo nickels, as we're going to see in a second. So let's go ahead and open up the first page and see what we're able to get on that first page. Okay, so as you can see, we got a single coin on the first page, and it was actually the first year Buffalo Nickel 1913. So I'm definitely happy about that. As you can see, we had to uh, put a little bit of acid on the date in order to make it show up. A lot of these coins get worn down really easily, so uh, you have to do that in order to actually get a date off the coins. Uh, so there you go, that's one coin on the first page. Let's see what we got on the second page. All right, so coming in at two coins on that second page, we got a 1920 Buffalo, which actually came out in the last box. That was uh, an Ender, I believe. And then this one right here, 1923, we also had to put some acid on that to get the date off. So, so far that 1913 is uh, the rarest one that we have for the Buffalo Nickels. Moving on to the third page, and you see we only have a single coin on this page as well. The date actually showed up really well on this one. Of course, this is the most common uh, Buffalo Nickel that we have. But as you can see, guys, like I said, this is a very difficult coin to hunt. Um, definitely something that you want to look out for, but you're going to have to hunt a lot of nickels if you want to get anywhere near filling this uh, collection up. All right, so here is 
is a bird's eye view of what we were able to get in the Buffalo Nickel series. As you can see, we only were able to get four coins out of the 66 possible. Coming up here to the little statistics I wrote up, that's only 6.06% .06 complete. So we definitely have a lot more work to go. But if you think about this, guys, listen, I only looked through eight boxes of nickels and I was able to find four Buffalo Nickels. So we're averaging about one Buffalo Nickel every two boxes. That's not bad. That's something that you can definitely get excited for. And uh, also looking at this, it looks like we have a lot of room uh, to fill in some of these coins. So it's likely that the next uh, Buffalo Nickel we get is actually gonna be going into this collection in a unique spot. So I'm super excited for that in season two. So in summary, Jefferson Nichols came in at 90.66% complete. We got 165 out of 182 of those coins. The Canadian Nichols came in at about a third complete with 20 out of 60 of those coins found. And then the Buffalo Nichols was very much lacking four out of 66 coins for 6.06% .06 complete. So if you're like me and you're interested in seeing a more in-depth breakdown of those statistics, you can head on over to my website. I just put up a hidden page and I'll link down to that in the description below. So as you're all probably well aware, not every single coin that I find goes into the collection and I do actually keep quite a few of them as extras. So I'm looking for 50s, 40s, 30s, anything old and anything interesting I'm keeping. So if you take a look here, we'll go ahead and slide this down. From the 1950s, we were able to get 98 Eight extra coins and I put them all in these tubes right here so all of these nickels right here that came out of that $800 are from the 1950s and uh, these don't include the low mintage orchidate coins that we were able to find now if we slide down just a little bit you can see right there 1940s we we're actually able to get 77 extra those are in these tubes right here all of these coins right here you can see are some nice old nickels from the 1940s all right, so now coming down to the next one here, 1939. So basically the Jefferson Nichols from the 30s, the only one that doesn't fall under the low mint or key date range is the 1939 plane. And we were actually able to get quite a few of those. We averaged over one per box, which is pretty cool to see. All of these nickels right here are from 1939. All right, coming down just a little bit more. So Buffalo Nickels, we weren't able to get any more extras. Every single Buffalo Nickel that you saw went into the collection. Now coming down just a little bit more, V Nickels. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get any V Nickels. I'm hoping that uh, maybe those will come up in season two, but it's not likely, It's they're a pretty tough coin to find. All right, so coming down, uh, oh, I should probably mention as well, we didn't find any Shield Nickels, but I've never found one of those in my life, so. So war nickels, guys, we actually were able to get two extra war nickels. These are those 35% silver. I'll go ahead and pull these out just to show you because we only have a couple of them. May as well, uh, you know, they're kind of interesting. They sound pretty cool. So there is the, uh, you can see a Philadelphia and it looks like both of these are gonna be uh, Philadelphia's. This one is beat up really, really bad. I don't know exactly what happened to it, but uh, I think actually, okay, so you see right here, this one's a 43 Philadelphia. And then this one is a 1942 Philadelphia. So two Philadelphia coins that uh, ended up being extras. We got both of those already into the collection. All right, so there's our two war nickels. Let's uh, slide this down just a little bit more. So low mint coins, guys, we were able to get five extras. You can see right here. I'll go ahead and go through these dates with you right now uh, just to show you what I was able to get. And some of the, this is just really astonishing uh, what we were able to get with the, uh, the low mintage coins. All right, so right here, this is something that if you watched the last episode, you'll remember, 1947S. So we actually got three of these in a single box, and of course, plus the one uh, that's in the collection. So that's an extra right there. Here is another 1947S. This is actually a low mintage coin. I believe the mintage on this one comes in at somewhere around 24 million, something like that. I think it's 24.7. All right, so there is our third 1947 San Francisco, guys. These are very difficult to find. It's uh, really cool to see so many of them come out of a single box. So we have a nice little grouping of three right there. And then we got a couple of other extra low mintage coins. Here's a 1948, and uh, this one's also a San Francisco. It's pretty beat up, but uh, definitely a cool coin to have. And then our final low mintage coin right here, uh, you can see we have yet again another San Francisco mint mark and this one is the 1953. So five extra low mintage coins right there. Let's go ahead and bring this down just a little bit more. As we mentioned earlier, uh, we did get 
that 1938 San Francisco key date, which I've put in this little flip right here. And actually, while we're at it, guys, the 1938 plane does count as a low mintage coin. So uh, I guess we did actually get six of those low mintage coins. So I'll go ahead and put that one right there. This was the only extra key date that we were able to find. Definitely happy with it. And uh, actually looking at it right there, you can see it pretty well from this angle uh, as well, that that's definitely gonna be uh, a San Francisco right there. The next item on our list is proof coins. So you can see we got one and that's one total. Uh, these don't actually go into the collection. I don't have a place to collect these other than just to put them into tubes. But uh, I think you'll notice the difference on this coin right here. This is a proof coin. It's uh, the only one that came out of the $800. And I think it's a 1980 San Francisco, yep. So you can see that it's got a nice uh, mirror finish on it. Very shiny, uh, very cool looking coin. Definitely an interesting coin to pull out and uh, definitely a fun one to be hunting as well. All right, so let's see what's next on the list here. Under proof, we have foreign coins. So this is not counting Canadians because we get you know a decent amount of Canadians uh, to the point where I don't really count them uh, as foreigns. But let's take a look at this foreign coin that we have right here and uh, see what we have. So it actually looks like it's a $1 coin. Uh, I'm not sure if I ever figured out where this was from. Oh, okay, so this is actually a Mexican uh, $1 coin. It says Estados Unidos Mexi Mex Mexicano. I don't know how to say that, but anyways, we got a nice little $1 Mexican coin right there. And uh, that is the only foreign other than all the Canadians that came out. And then finally, we have our 2009s and we were able to get one extra of those. I'm sure you guys already know uh, what this coin looks like, but just in case you don't, here is what you're gonna be looking for uh, if you wanna find those elusive 2009s. So that's a lot of cool extras that we're able to get out of those $800 in nickels, but the fun doesn't stop there because we have a few more finds that I wanna show you. So taking a look here, you can see we have two rolls. One of them looks a little smaller than the other. We're gonna go ahead and save that for later, but let's look at this one first. So these are our extra Canadian coins right here. As you can see, we really didn't get a whole lot, uh, you know, in addition to the ones that went into the collection. There's maybe, I don't know, 15 or 20 coins right there, but really not a whole lot compared to, like I was saying with the pennies where we get just tons and tons of them. Uh, but anyways, now let's go ahead and take a look at this roll right here. So what do you think is in this roll? Well, if you guys watched the series for a while, you probably know. This is actually mostly filled with pennies, but there are a couple dimes. So guys, unfortunately, we did get a ton of pennies in our nickel rolls, which means that we lost four cents on every single penny that we found. Um, uh, the good news is that every single dime that we found, we actually gained five cents back. So I actually did a little spreadsheet right here, just uh, just for your viewing pleasure. You can see we got 30 pennies, so there's 30 pennies in this uh, in this roll that came out of nickel rolls, and uh, two dimes. Now if we do the math, it actually comes out to a dollar and 10 cent loss. So I'm hoping that that dollar and 10 cents is worth it for all the cool stuff we found. And honestly guys, who am I kidding? It's definitely worth it. Uh, we got a ton of really good stuff that's worth way more than a dollar and 10 cents. So guys, that's pretty much the end of the finds for CoinQuest Nickels season one. So now that we're at the end of the first season of CoinQuest Nickels, I just have to say thank you to everybody who's been supporting this series, supporting the channel, and especially thank you to everyone who has purchased these coin roll hunting plates mats for me. Of course, if you haven't yet gotten one of these coin roll hunting place mats, you can head on over to my website and get one for yourself at quinscoins.com and I'll put links down in the description below. And real quickly, while we're on the topic of the coin roll hunting place mats, I want to give just a huge shout out to Coins for Amateurs who's been using them and promoting them for the past, I think, year now, maybe even longer. Thank you so much, Chad, for uh, using these place mats and enjoying them. I really like your live streams and I like what you're doing over there on your channel. So make sure to go subscribe to Coins for Amateurs if you have not already. He's a really good friend of mine and a huge supporter of the channel. But anyways, guys, that is a wrap on CoinQuest Nickels Season 1. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to go down below and leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new because I post new videos like this every single week, always bringing you along with the hunts and having a good time. Make sure to check out the playlist at the end of this video if you want to watch the whole series over again or just to watch it from the beginning if you haven't already to make sure you didn't miss an episode. And as always, I'm Quinn, and this is Quinn's Coins signing out, and I will see you in Season 2 of CoinQuest Nichols.